Okay, seriously, one of my favorite things that bands do, particularly metal bands, is when they evolve or come up with a new theme, style, or sound during the development of their career. For some people that are fans of music, they can't stand it. If a band even so much as changes anything, they lose their mind and say, I'm only listening to things from the Black Album, or I'm only listening to things when Chester was in the band. I'm only listening to things before Brian Johnson was doing the hokey pokey. Anyway, if you get all those jokes, you know that bands change things up. Sometimes because they need to, because of things change or they lose a member or a member leaves the band or whatever different life event occurs. And sometimes bands just develop. They find their own sound and some people like it. Some people love it. Well, a band that we didn't expect to do it was Ad Infinitum. And in the new album, Abyss, every song they've released so far doesn't sound like any of those. I'm confused. I like it, but I'm confused. I was fortunate to sit down with Adrian, the guitarist from Ad Infinitum, pick his brain a little bit, we told a lot of jokes, and, and we did talk about this development with Ad Infinitum. The new album comes out, cannot wait for it, neither can you. Whether you're ready or not, here's my conversation with Adrian. And then afterwards, we're going to react to the new song from Ad Infinitum. Are you ready? You're not, but right after my theme, it's going to happen. In the YouTube reaction system, certain videos must be reacted to by highly trained specialists. Unfortunately, we only have this idiot. Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd. I, I don't know if you know this, but um, I'm actually doing a radio interview with the hottest new radio voice in all of Europe. Um, he, also, he also has a side project. It's Dynamic Adrian, the newest voice of radio in Europe. He also has a, hot, a side gig where he plays, I think you play guitar for some band, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's just like um, a hobby that I do like once in a month. And it's, it's quite fun, but I really enjoy speaking into microphones. I, I swear. And they, they're just now seeing this because I wasn't recording when you said hello. Everybody, when he said hello, I went, hello? Um, is Adrian there? Can, can he come to the computer? I thought I was talking to your dad or something because it was like, hello? <laughs> it's like it's like your personal assistant uh would you like to speak to the adrian why'd you say <laughs> the adrian that sounds so weird anyway for those who don't know this guy yeah. is one fourth of a band that's confusing the crap out of me in 2024 after i thought i had them pegged nope brand new album brand new sound holy crap ad infinitum how you doing dude i am doing very well and we all watch your reactions we all enjoy it <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> and no 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 it's it's really good like you're one of the few who actually talk about it in like with a profound knowledge and um to me because like you can you can you put it into the right boxes it's not like oh i heard one single so the entire album must sound like this and that now <laughs> Because I know better. many, as at least like social media comments are like this. It's like you're trying to put different singles out there with a different vibe. So you catch like people here, there and there and you are fishing in that pond and you're fishing in that pond. And some people just listen to one song and then think, oh, the entire album goes right into that box. And um yeah, I don't have. Like, Do you want to know why that happens? Yeah, but you're more intelligent about that. I mean, you have more listening experience, of course, but it's. Ooh, I uh, thought you were smart. You just called me intelligent. Damn. Um, I'm frightfully yeah. dumb. But no, oh, okay. You want to know why that is? Okay. You want to know why? It's because yeah. I'm old. I'm not yeah. young and dumb. I've been in the game a bit, and I grew okay. up loving music, and I started in metal. And then I went to jazz and funk and acoustic and then folk. Missed all of the 2000s and 2010s in metal. Came back yeah. in 2018 when the explosion occurred with YouTube and everything. 
and I just came back to it going, the hell is going on? Because yeah. everything just got so crazy. So um, for me as a musician, I play, I play percussion, but I'm not, I'm not like Nick, but then, a, but then again, I am a little bit like Nick because okay. I have a beard. Mm. So therefore, epic beard means epic drumming. Did you know that? Um, yeah, it doesn't translate to guitar. I... Unless you're unless unless you're a member of ZZ Top, then it completely yeah. translates. Mm. All right. So why are we talking about this? Okay, ad infinitum. Um, it, did I say that right? Because everyone says there's a different way to say it, and I've always said ad infinitum, like mm. it's infinite and with yeah. So how? How is it really said? If if I was if I was from Switzerland or from Germany, how would I say it? Like in Germany, you would say, "Wait, I need to go and get into the German mode." Uh, ad infinitum. Okay, but it's not so, it's not ad ad infinitum, or you know all the you know how people say things like in like their own inflection, and it's like, why would you say it like that? And they're like, "I'm from Sweden." Mm. Oh, okay, it explains a lot. Um. Yeah, yeah, no, but ad, ad infinitum is totally fine. But I don't, we don't get hurt with if once someone says ad infinitum, you, sh you should scold them. Yeah, I have a very complex last <laughs> name, and okay, even for German, even for Germans, it's like I'm used to that no one pronounces it right. So it's I don't. Have you want to? You want to do it? Let's do it right now. Okay. For some reason, it's the crazy B, and that's what I call it because it, it's that particular. Well, no, because yeah, look, okay, yeah. okay, I'm from America. Sorry. Yeah, I that know. I know already, you don't have that. I'm, better. I'm slightly handicapped because we don't even do English well. And then whenever I tried, to, I took your actual name with the crazy German B. That's what I call it. And because yeah. um, it's not, but it looks like one. And then when you put it into the into the OBS to place your name below your head right now, it does the double S. Yeah. And I mean, so, comes, yeah. Yeah, so I, I know um, you think your last name is hard, but can I try it? Yeah, sure, of course. It's Thesvinsitz, Witz, Thesvinsitz. Am I? I mean, no. I know I'm wrong. No, it's it's Tessenfitz. Okay. <laughs> no, just don't mind. It's there. No, it's okay. No, I'm gonna make you feel better. I'm gonna make you feel better. You ready? Try. Yeah. Go ahead. Try. Like Five letters. German, it cannot be that hard. Like that, but there, of course, are different options to it. In German, it would be easy. It's it's it's. Yeah. And in English, I would say. Or or or, or if you go to India, it's. Mm, yeah. What about French? Yes. Dude, first try! I'm so proud of you! Not that my pride in you means anything, but dude, first Is try! Like, do you have a French family name? Yes, I'm actually Canadian French. Ah, nice. Okay. Yeah, it's the nose, I know. And my and my and my affinity for loving Gojira albums. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of, of, of European bands that, that melt things, at Infinitum, what have you done? Why did you do it? And uh, are you doing more? Oh my God, you don't even know. It's, uh, we already like started writing new stuff because there's so much going on and there's like so many tours to plan and we already see for next year it becomes hard to write new music and we want to keep up the pace. Because Sucks being just... good, doesn't it? <laughs> No, it's fine. We're 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 managing, and <laughs> but here's but, the but, yeah. But you guys formed in 2020, right? Yeah, during COVID. Yes, and nah, it's yeah. Well, well, we yeah, but first, we had our like the album was out in with basically with a start of COVID, but we were like already like writing and talking and planning in 2019. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, how many years have you been together? Four. How many albums do you have out or how many albums have you done? 
like four <laughs> and, and, and one acoustic album. Uh, okay. How do y'all have time for this? I don't understand. Um, basically, it's it's actually super easy. I don't get my head around how you could release albums any slower. Um, because with bands, it, it's like this. Um, when you don't have like a goal or set, let's say like a, um, a thing coming up in the next four weeks, for example, like a rehearsal or we need to get this done. We have an interview there. We have a festival. We have like a band contest. We have um, a promo interview, whatever. We have an album release coming up. We're recording for the next EP. If you don't have like these small goals like sprayed all over the year, then many things happen very quickly that bands break up. Because you see it with many local bands that they don't have like an EP coming or they have nothing ahead. They're just sitting around and then the energy just turns against themselves and they start talking about unnecessary stuff, start discussing about things that are not necessary. And um, to me, that's one of the most um, paralyzing things for starting bands when there are not small goals along the way and you keep the energy focused on these things. I'm not saying, oh, Ed and Finton would break up without any like goal or something like this, but um, for us, it's like, that's our main project. We don't have anything else that requires that much attention. So there's no reason to sit one year around. There's literally no reason for it. And we're all like at these, we're at the end of our twenties, beginning of our thirties. Um, and that's, let's let, for us, it's like a very defining time and we know it and we I'm not saying we hear the clock ticking, but we know if we want to make progress, we need to make it now. And um, that's basically it's because we really want our shot at the. Yeah. And it's not like it's um, it's not like it's not an already full environment you're in. When you think about the German metalcore and modern metal scene. Oh, my God. What an explosion. What a renaissance. What a community that's built throughout Germany. For these younger metalcore, modern metal bands, these different styles and genres where it's you can't really sit still because you will get left behind. You see all these different bands. And if you throw a rock, um, I love watching the up and coming bands out of Germany because there's such a creativity, there's such a, a drive there. They're young, they're hungry. And then I see Ad Infinitum and you guys are so creative. You look at the three album set. I mean, yeah. chapter one, <laughs> chapter two, chapter three. And I was like, they're just doing so much. And then you guys hit this stride. You get on Napalm Records, which has such a freaking lineup of amazing bands in it already. And there's certain aspects of Ad Infinitum that I'm like, oh, it fits perfectly in, in, in all these genres with all these wonderful bands. And you guys kind of intermix in that vibe until Abyss. And you guys literally shift gears and go hard left. Dude, my first yeah. reaction was March on Versailles. And yeah. then my second reaction was the acoustic version of March on Versailles. Yeah. And as a, as a cajon player, as a djembe player, as a hand percussionist, I'm going, I'm loving all this folk stuff. And of course, yeah. you say that you have, there's nothing really pulling you anywhere. You can't say that about Melissa. Because Melissa is constantly being sought after by other projects, other artists for collaborations, helping out mm -hmm. on tours. And then, of course, she has uh, her side projects with Dark Side of the Moon with her husband. And, and of course, when they go on tour, they don't have a basis. Oh, what's Corbin doing? Oh, uh, uh, come on. You know, it's there's always something mm -hmm. going on. But yet, yeah. at Infinitum, I think it was always my band that I was like, God please let them just really catch fire hard in people's thought processes where they stand out amongst the, the crazy metal scene in Germany and in Europe right now to where we get a chance to see them here in the U.S. So when you guys came over and played those shows, I didn't get to see you because I was in Europe <laughs> on my honeymoon. It worked out oh. great. So yeah, well, let's do this again sometime. But 
I want to talk about Abyss because we could say that previous stuff kind of bordered on symphonic metal, bordered on some folk vibes, some storytelling type stuff. Yeah. Abyss kind of almost goes in a direction similar to something that Amareth would do, where there's a, tech, a sense of technology. It's like you got beamed up on a spaceship and... Where the hell are we going? Because wherever we're going, it's definitely fast. So tell me about Abyss. All right. So the hard shift is because we had a very early discussion already when we wrote like the third album, Chapter 3, Downfall, because we were thinking about, okay, trilogy makes sense. Let's start with something new after that. So we were all already going with that thought into the making of the third album. And after that was done, we recalibrated a lot of things and we um, really talked about, okay, where do we stand personally as musicians as and also with our taste? So, and we found out that when we were on tour, we don't listen to symphonic metal at all. No. Um, it's just, we kind of grew out of these kind of shoes. I mean... I came into that band and I've never listened to symphonic metal before, actually. I was like asked to join and there was already like a portfolio of songs written and it was, hey, it's symphonic metal, hop on board or not. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm up for anything. Let's, let's, let's do it. And um, I would say like the, mm, the genre was very, very strict with the first album also because there was a producer from outside who like shaped the did the sound design and the orchestrations and after that um we did it completely on our own and from then on it was like okay we um let me let me we grew into producing it more and more ourselves and with chapter four Oh, not chapter four with Abyss. Wow. I didn't hear that with, one. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, but with, with Abyss, it's like, um, it's like, okay, this is the most true to us because there's no outsider's help with orchestrations or, or anything. Everything is self made. And, um, that's just, um, for this moment in time, it's like the most authentic work to date from us. And still growing. I mean, we just started writing out of like time issues for next year for the next stuff. And it gets more and more direct and becomes more and more concrete where you want to go. And I think um, Chep Abyss is already like very much there what we also would listen to privately. I'm not saying we don't listen to our albums oh. at all <laughs> privately. We do. And we all love them. It's just um, more, I don't know how, how to say it, but it's like... I, I do. We, we, Are you yeah. ready? Yeah. If you're a marine biologist, you don't have an aquarium in your house. <laughs> if you're a mechanic, you don't work on your own car. If you're a doctor, you never go to a hospital. If it's something that, that's something that you're doing and it's something that is part of your vocation or your career, rarely do you want to do it when you're on your downtime. There has to be a balance in everything. So for me, I play hand percussion, but I listen to metalcore or progressive yeah. metal. It's the exact opposite of acoustic in most respects because I listen to the storytelling arrangements in how something is structured. Yeah. And unfortunately, I will tell you, don't tell Melissa this and don't let her watch. Um, all of Ad Infinitum songs, I listen to the lyrics and her vocals probably on the second or third time I listen, because I'm an arrangement guy. I'm a percussionist. Yeah. I want to hear the rhythm section. I want to hear the progression. I want to hear the musical storytelling. And then once I've gotten all that settled in my brain, mm. then I want to sit down and let Melissa tell me a story. But that's yeah. my personal vibe. So how you guys focus on your personal feelings, like you said, when you came into it originally, there was already a direction. There was already kind of a theme. There was someone driving that, that ship, per se. But what yeah. the person didn't know at the time was you guys like to fly planes. Yeah. So now that you've come full circle, you found yourself, you're successful. They're giving you a little bit more. Here's the reins. Yeah. Create something you want to create. All of a sudden yeah. people find out you like to fly planes. 
a lot of American, you know, country, country Western music here in the U.S. Yeah. A lot of those musicians that play country Western are all amazing metal musicians. And they listen to metal on the road. But then when the lights come on, they go out there and, well, my dog just died. You know, they, it's, but when, when it's they come off stage, the they're listening to Porcupine Tree. Yeah, or, it's, it's like, funny. wait, what? It's true. So it's, it's really okay to say that our first three chapters were telling a story that is from us. But now that you've seen the story we've told, why don't you come back to the house and let's go have some, we'll cook some dinner and just hang yeah. out. Yeah. Take basically abyss is you've met someone. All the stuff is out of the way. When you invite that person to come back to your house and just spend time as a family, they let get to know the real you. And that's just mm -hmm. how it is. And I think it's amazing. Yeah. It, I, um, I need to take a few steps back because of course we listen to our albums and stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely fed up with our music because I mean, I've, no, no, because I listen to it so much. I mean, I don't listen to it after the release because I've already heard it so often during production, yeah. after mixing, feedback loops with mixing, mastering, whatever. And, you know, like the Ch Abyss is already like growing out of my ears. Uh, so often I heard it. And, um, and I listen to it also out of a professional interest because afterwards when you took a bit of distance to your recent work it's like you see stuff more clearly and what would you change in the future for the next album or the next stuff you're working on and um so yeah we that's my approach how to listen to our music i don't know how the others do it um i just wanted to say always yeah. the new stuff of course feels the freshest also feels the best to play live um sorry for the evergreens that sometimes fall under the carpet <laughs> it's fine but, but yeah it's how did they say that um james hetfield told kurt hammett one time he's like you know you're gonna play that song for 40 years you know that right <laughs> when when they recorded when they recorded the black album they there was a there's a part of the documentary where they're going man i love this hook man and the producer goes, this is going to be the single that's going to be played on every radio station forever. And yeah. Kurt looks over at, 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 at James and goes, but I wrote this really, really hard. And James looked at him and goes, well, you better really learn it because you're going to be playing it for the next 40 years. And every show, even yeah. now, they play Inner yeah. Sandman at the end of every show. And they've been playing it for th 35 years now. And it's like, yeah, how, does, mm -hmm. how do you do that? You're, you're talking about, you know, you create something. It's literally from your heart, in your mind, in your body. You've been playing it to produce it. To, to put it on a record, it's got to be right. So you've been playing it yeah. and living it for how, however yeah. long. You put it out, then you tore it. At some point, you have to realize, yes, it's me. But at the same time, this is now literally like breathing for the next... I don't think yeah. people realize how difficult it is it's, for an uh, artist to realize this is what I'm known for now. Yeah, yeah, but it's a question of how do you approach um, liking your own stuff because it's always, it's you've got to understand it's just like a frame of that specific time that you, it just, yeah, it just framed this one moment in time of your career and it's a, it has to be okay that there, it, there are flaws or stuff that you learned afterwards made things sound better than back then. And uh, it's just important to make peace with your own work sometimes. I mean, we all, musicians always tend to be a little bit perfectionist, but there's always, it's healthy to keep the balance with being at peace with your recent work and keep on striving for uh, making better music in the future. I have a question about the album specifically. The album comes yeah. out on October 11th, so we're getting close. Yeah, we're, we're about we're about two weeks away, um, and this interview is being filmed September the 24th. So this is going to come out a little bit close to the album. I don't know what's going to happen between now and then, 
But uh, between now and then, let's just let me ask you this question: Is there any particular song on the album that it doesn't have to be one of the singles that's already come out? But is there any particular song on the album that you yourself want everyone to look for? And is there any particular reason why they should really why why it's something that you want to share with them? There's always those songs. There's there's something about they're like you're in the studio, you've written something, you've created something, and you're like. I know this isn't going to be a single. It may not even be popular, but this right here that I put on this album, this, I love this. Is there anything in particular we could look for? Um, yes. So to me, with the writing and the band's energy, um, I would put definitely the song Follow Me Down on the top of my list. Okay. Have you heard the entire album yet? I haven't had a chance to, but I, I've, I'm, the second it drops or the second I have access, it's on. <laughs> yeah. It's on it, my it, playlist, my it, private it has, playlist, not the public playlist. Let's do it right. You, but. I, I think you will see this one. It's going to be like the, the single the, or the out now song from the oh, album. For, and has it, so it'll be it, the single that gets paired with this interview. Perfect. Tell us maybe, more about yeah. what we just watched. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, it's, uh, yeah. I To me, it's like the... Mm, best riff uh we ever did on entire Hell infinite history oh. and to me like the the song structure is the most efficient direct and um let's say most accessible way of a song structure for everyone to listen to and also uh it's going to be an insane live song and it's going to be like the show opener for our upcoming shows oh we just produced like the intro for our shows like the 90 seconds soundscapes whatever before we enter the stage and this is going to be like the first song of the set and it's going to hit so fucking hard you don't know where your where your ears are and um i'm really looking forward to this and the next one um would be Anthem for the Broken. Okay. I heard a lot of criticism that there are no guitar solos in the singles. And we made, it's not like uh, I was being like, Adrian, you don't have any guitar solos anymore. I, to me, guitar playing is what does surf the song actually. And where does it make sense? Uh, I don't want to be like the annoying guest rapper. Um and um, well so we made, i mean i don't so we took we made these decisions like very very mm, we took it serious where to place it an anthem for the broken uh i know you guys like unstoppable but mm -hmm. anthem for the broken that solo is an entire different level of guitar soloing like at least in in my guitar small guitar sphere uh and it's something completely new and i'm really looking forward to uh how people will react to it. I, I and think, that's, yeah. I'm so used to your guys on the first three albums. There was always this this anthem feel of like a march, not just March of Marseille, but every <laughs> rhythmic section for every song had this deliberate pacing that mm. signified that symphonic castle, fire, plague masks, storytelling, but there was always this movement. It doesn't exist on this album where it's repetitious. There are different pacings and tones, tempos and s signatures that really set it apart. When you talk about um, this, the song, um, Follow Me Down, yeah. um, is it more technical in its, in, its, in its progressions? Or is it, when you say it's more accessible, is it more paced evenly that's what i'm trying to figure out when you're talking about that it's more accessible i'm talking about accessible in the form and uh, the meaning of the song structure okay that's like the the parts are so um they're going hands and hands so fluently okay that it's just uh it just never lets really go Ooh. and everything <laughs> makes sense and nothing is there for um, let's say uh, you have symphonic elements in this in, in, in a song, 
And for example, these symphonic elements are there because they fit the song, not because the decision has to be made. They have to be like symphonic yeah. elements somewhere. So let's go for it. Because And follow me down, what I meant with it's like the most strict and stripped down to the bare um, things that are really needed to create this song. And I think therefore it's like punching so hard. And yeah. Um, and for you to open the show with that, yeah. it has to set a tone. It, yeah, it, for sure. It, they all, there's only two things you can do when you're, when you're opening a show. The song you open with has to be your second biggest hit if you're a perennial band. Um, usually <laughs> for your encore, you put your biggest hit, you know? Yeah. But your first song usually has to set the tone. It's either something that makes the crowd jump or it's something that punches the, fa punches the crowd in the face so hard, they're like... I thought we were coming to see Ad Infinitum. What is going on? It's one of those situations where they're literally not sure what they've walked into, but they ain't going yeah. anywhere. Yeah, I get yeah, yeah. that. I'm looking yeah. for. I want to. Okay, now I want to hear that. <laughs> no, I, I need to hear that now. So wait, 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 wait. Uh, can I actually? Can you? No. If I, if I would like, I could. I could show you the the intro if I could. Ah, the host declined the sharing of the screen of the oh okay but no then not <laughs> no I, 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 and and uh because i don't know exactly when this has come out if if i release a video of something that they're hoping yeah, that fine. comes out at a certain time i don't want to get anyone in in trouble um, yeah, yeah okay because because some of these things are important whereas yeah. for you you're just trying to get the music out there and have people go that was awesome yeah. and me i'm just like i'm the guy that wants to look at it and go that was awesome so um all right, so what is on tap? You have the album coming out on October 10th. I know that there's a very intense touring schedule coming. Um, yeah. Uh, you guys get... I, the next show that you guys have is the day the album drops <laughs> in the <laughs> Netherlands. Makes sense, o uh, October 11th. Um, the, the dates through uh, Europe are pretty much set all the way through, I think, all the way through into the spring, right? Yeah, um, all the well, way through we, February. Yeah, as well. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, another tour. We tour October, November, and then January into February with um, Elovite and Infected, Infected Brain. Brain. That, oh, that, that's one hell of a lineup. That's, I mean, granted, Camelot and Frozen Crown with Blackbriar, that's pretty awesome too. Um, those guys in Frozen Crown are hilarious. Um, Camelot, they're so professional and so nice, but um, an Infected Rain... What a what 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 a great group of people. You guys lucked out. Y'all got some pretty good lineups uh for this coming thing. But my question is um wh why would why do people tour in January in Nordic countries? Who 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 tours uh, on who tours on January 29th in Finland? Why 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 why? I guess you have to ask <laughs> the booker of <laughs> I love IT. I don't know. We're just well, there to have a good time. <laughs> nobody's going outside, so we might exactly. as well. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean that I think the the Nordic people are uh, not so easily scared by uh, <laughs> by colder weather, so it's going to be fun I am. for them. Uh, where I am, <laughs> I live in South Louisiana on the Gulf Coast. We don't have a winter. Oh, so when oh. I asked when do I need to visit Finland and Sweden, they said August. Come on mm -hmm. over. <laughs> Gotcha. I was so surprised. I, I had my first time in America, like recently, as as you know, yeah. with, with that infinity. But it was really my first time, like being there for a tour, and I was Sorry. so surprised how incredibly hot it is. Like yes. everywhere. You guys like, came in like what? the biggest one of the big. It's so hot here. People don't realize how hot it is. Um, and how how'd you like those long drives between tour dates? Uh, it's. Uh, it's fine, I guess, because we are, are we're all sleeping. To, to us, yeah. it does not make any difference if you. But uh, seriously, it's so hot there, yes. and I, I get your fetish for ACs now um, because, like in 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 Germany, it's yeah. so relaxed. But of course, in summer days, you could like question why the fuck are there no ACs like anywhere in Germany, but holy cow it, i i felt so sorry for the american peoples like i i could never live there i would is, I could isn't it weird on, that here you yeah. could have a place that is 146 degrees fahrenheit 
which is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah Death Valley. Up, I think. And a thousand miles north in the winter, it's negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which at that point, Celsius and Fahrenheit meet. So it's negative wow. 40 Celsius with a wind. Mm -hmm. And it's like a thousand Maybe. miles away. It's just, a it's bananas. Miles is a lot. Well, not only that, but when people, um, so many bands are like, hey, we're coming to America. Are you going to come see our shows? And I, I desperately want to. But if you don't come to Texas, it's very hard for me to go there because yeah. you know that if they, hey, we're going to be in New York. I'm like, you do realize that's three days nonstop driving to get there. It's yeah. that, I mean, that's how big it all is. And, and when yeah. you tour it, it's just, and also going from state to state, it's literally like going to another country because the yeah, cultures yeah. are so different. Yeah, yeah it's, and we're it's, weird, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, it, it was it was very very interesting, and um, it's so cool to see it for the first time. And um, it's so interesting how how different American people are. Like when you meet them, it's so easy to have like chit chat. And everybody just starts talking out of nowhere. Or my problem with everybody asks you, how, how are you? No, no, no. How are you? They don't ask you how. How are you doing? How are you, you doing? Exactly. You doing? Like, uh, it's to, to me, it feels like unpolite to just answer with good or I'm fine. Like nobody in Europe will ask you, how are you doing? True. But where it's I'm just, from, well, it was so confusing to me too. Where how, I'm how from, not only that? do they want to meet you, they want you to come over to the house. They want to cook for you. Is there anything you need? Like the hospitality where I live, it's very different than say in a major city. So it's very, yeah. the cultures are very adverse here. They're very eclectically designed. And there's so many European bands like Ad Infinitum or a Feuerschwanz or all these different bands that have never really, and you guys did it this last year, but to, when you come to America and realize, holy cow, this, it is, you see it on the news. It was one of my favorite things when we visited Europe over the summer was to watch everyone come up to me and ask me, okay, so tell me, is it really like that over there? And I'm like, where? Like in America, is it really? And I'm like, oh, it's way worse than that you should come and they're like oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um yeah, yeah. I, i'm looking forward to the album october 11th this has been such a crazy trip because yeah. when when i heard that i was going to get to talk to you i was like i gotta ask him why this album is so unique and it's very interesting the reasons why this is the way this is um i'm looking forward i will look for those songs um I hope to meet. Um, the only thing, I think the closest we ever got was uh, you guys went to Atlanta for that show. I sent yeah. one of my friends with the album for you to sign and you did and I got it back and I was like, I got to meet Melissa, but I told her, I said, listen, I need all these bands that you do collaborations with and your band over here because mm -hmm. it's just such, it's such a crazy, amazing time for music when i was growing yeah. up you only listened to what was on the radio there was no internet yeah. so the radio yeah. told you what was good and now that mm. we have the internet and streaming services and and youtube there is such a wealth of musical just experiences around the world and i'm so proud and so excited that i got to enjoy the music that that you and your that in your friends in Ad Infinitum put together for us. Cause it's been a crazy, beautiful ride. Um, my Thank daughter you. to this day, um, uh, there's, there's five songs on the first three albums that my 15 year old plays every day when she gets out of school. She's like, nice. It, it, there's just, she's like, it makes it. She's like, it's like a fairy tale, but it's metal. And I'm like, exactly, exactly. That's why I like it too. You know, she still wants to be a girl, but she wants to, you know, bleed, make things bleed and destroy and walls of death, you know? So thank you for being, nice. uh, thank you for making my child want to go do, go to metal shows. I appreciate that. Um, is there anything you want to say to everyone that's watching this interview that we didn't really do as an interview? Cause I think we just talked about crazy stuff the whole time. Is there anything you want to tell the people that actually want to know something important? 
Hey, yeah, for sure. I, I really hope you all like the album Abyss and maybe not everything is for you, but uh, I think we think it's diverse enough that everyone will find his or hers personal treasure in there. And we're looking forward to your feedback. Any chance, um, any chance that we could see some of you guys do some dancing? Us? Yeah, sure. On yeah, stage. Cause, Just cause, gotta gotta buy a ticket. Because <laughs> well, I was because I noticed that the, the last one, she, Melissa had some background dancers. And I yeah. was wondering if you, if you guys were having background dancing tryouts for you and and Corbin, and I, I, I could maybe do some dancing. But I mean, I don't think you want anybody to see it. But I'm willing to do mm. it. Yeah, maybe the day will come. I'll keep but, my shirt uh, on. I promise. All right, um, everybody. <laughs> the yeah. smoothest voice in metal. Dude, mm. how do you... You should... No, seriously, if if this whole music thing doesn't work out, you should do voiceover work. It's just this mic. It's always pretty expensive. <laughs> uh, no. He he pulls the mic away, and, and, he's, and he sounds like he's five. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, wait, wait for it, like... <laughs> yes um that uh, you know what i did i did the entire interview for that moment all right everybody yeah. <laughs> that is adrian uh one of the amazing musicians on an incredible band that has taken us on such a crazy journey and now we're going to outer space mother huggers um thank you so much for everything and good luck on this album we look forward to seeing you soon and with that there you go guys yeah. we'll see you later hey, everybody that was my conversation with adrian now Today is October the 11th. The album is out, Abyss. And apparently the song that they've released for the album release is pretty much exactly what we anticipated. Follow me down. It's the brand new rabbit hole presented by Ad Infinitum. Are you ready? All right, let's check out the new song because uh, Adrian set the table on this one. I believe him. Sometimes you just got to do what you love. Let's enjoy this together. You see all the imagery from the previous videos of this album from you see that pose of her when she was floating through outer space or or halo or there's so many different things going on now it's being tied together and it is following them down a rabbit hole a new i'm not gonna say that anything ended with them I guess they're just kind of shifting gears. This song is very unique because if we remember when they did Outer Space and it started with with Melissa just going that that harsh out of control and it was just that that heavy groove and then it settled into a very jazzy pop funky vibe. And then this modern development of the sound of this band not a castle to be seen not a fire not a fire cannon none of that stuff a departure from what we knew but follow me down really brings it into perspective everything we talked everything adrian and i talked about when we weren't joking around i know maybe five minutes 
we talked about how serious they take their music. And this song is uncompromising. There's, there's, there's no gimmick here. When, when, when you do a song like Follow Me Down, where it is extremely rich in musical arrangement from both the bass, per, bass line perspective, rhythm section, and of course the crazy guitar phrasing that Aaron, uh, Adrian is throwing down here. And Melissa doesn't have backup dancers. Melissa's not tumbling through space yet. It's just them, a light above them. There's nothing but darkness around them. There's no dancing around. It's, it's, it's time. It all comes back. Whether you loved chapter one, two, chapter two, chapter three, that entire journey that they took us on through so many different locations and vibes and feels from the March on Versailles. For some of us, it was our first song all the way through the end of chapter three. And, and every, every song seemed like a, a wonderful, wondrous, fantastical tale. This it's almost like we went from the 15 and 1600s, a very romantic time in music and art to a futuristic AI vision that is as expansive as space itself. There are no limits. It's scary, but there are no limits. Now, I'm doing this live. I haven't heard the song or seen this video yet. And I'm just telling you how I feel about it. And when Adrian says, oh, we watch your reactions. We really love how you capture these things that we play and stuff it's it's only from our perspective of of storytelling and i may be completely wrong here because when a band does a song like this i immediately focus on if everything else they've done sounds one way and then this is just what is primarily their sound that even if you go all the way back to you know Chapter one, the first album, all the way to here, there's one thing that Ad Infinitum is always capable of. And it's that immense, powerful sound that elicits an emotional response. Sometimes it's scary. Sometimes it's wonderment. Sometimes it is aggressive, but it's always inspiring. All the releases of this album so far, Abyss, have been fantastical to capture the imagination to make you question what is real what is going on this song reminds me it's still the four same people it's still what they have in here and can you keep up i hope we can Not even the same tones.
<laughs> that groove was so naughty at the end. It was so good. There's a part in the song, and I, I, I want to... It's a wonderful image from Melissa there. Um, I think I figured out what it means to me. Okay? Now, this album could mean a bunch of different things to a lot of people. There's going to be songs in this that mean things for everyone else. And it may not be the actual um, meaning that the band wrote when they, when they showed this, but I figured out what the difference is between that and this. Remember when everything was analog? When, you know, you, you played everything analog and then it went to digital and everything kind of changed. It was just as good, but it was different. Melissa's going to get this joke. And of course, the rest of them from Ad Infinitum are going to get this joke as well because they've done some of this stuff. There's a huge difference between a harp and a piano. Both very similar in the way the strings are arranged in, a, in, in the way they're set out, but they're done different. It's an escalation. And there's a huge difference between a piano and a synthesizer from 1982. That is someone playing a piano. Or an orchestra. Or synths that sound like the pads of strings. That symphonic metal sound. There was always an orchestral. Something old. It sounded classical. It sounded fantastical going backwards in time. Telling stories that were fantastical and fantasy, but based upon the past. At this moment in the song, I'm going to play it again, just this little bridging part where everything cuts out and you're going to hear pad fills that in times past would have been orchestral, symphonic, string elements that told a story like a legend. This is a story of the future. It's the difference between piano and synthesizer. Listen for it. This would be a normal part in any previous album for this band where there would be string elements, fire, castles, dragons, whatever. Fantastical outfits for Melissa to sit there like a goddess and do the thing she does. And the guys are looking up at the sky or wearing plague masks. They're damn near on a SpaceX, SpaceX rocket ship to Mars in this. That's the complete different... Not just in sound, but the way it looks. They've gone from fantastical stories of the past to outer freaking space. Listen to this bridge. Listen for the things that would normally be string elements. And listen to what they've done to it instead. Listen. So, yeah, good shot. <laughs> We're doing nothing but good shots on this, on this video. So, my favorite part is, is that if you see Ad Infinitum on any tour for the rest of this year, and of course into next year and in the future, you get to have both. It would be like going and seeing the classic stuff that Rush did in the, in the 70s, where everything was, you know... 2112. And then they shifted into moving pictures. Abyss is their moving pictures. If you loved all the stuff that Ad Infinitum was before, you have to understand that a band that continues to develop is going to develop their music. So if everything that they did before was Hemispheres and 2112 and that classic analog fa fantasy storytelling, 
eventually they have to do Tom Sawyer. They have to do, you know, subdivisions. You know, they have to do moving pictures. Um, that's the analogy I'm thinking of. If Rush had to step into the future, so did Ad Infinitum. I want to thank Adrian for spending the time with me and putting up with my silliness. Um, to all the members of Ad Infinitum, thank you so much for this amazing journey. And it makes it sound like we're going away, but we're not. We're just saying welcome to a new album. Um, for everybody that sees this band live going forward, know that you're going to get the best of both worlds. You're going to get fantastical stories that seem like they come from the from legends past and futuristic stories that capture the imagination and make you want to race into the future. We get both. And that's pretty awesome. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching, everybody. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a like. It really helps the channel grow. Also, if you want to subscribe, right over there. A big thank you to all my Patreons out there for everything you do. And if you want more content like this, check them out above. Remember, love one another, take care of each other. We're all stuck on this mud ball together. We'll see you later.